Hi YouTube. All right, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, start on the next uh, part of this video here um, on drawing uh, Leo DiCaprio. And although I haven't finished the uh, the hair or the forehead or any of that stuff, I thought what I'd do in this video is go ahead and just start working on the nose here. I can always go back and work on everything else, is which is what I intend on doing. But for right now, let's just concentrate on the nose in this video. Now, here is the reference photo, as you can see, and that's my drawing there. And so that's the nose we're going to draw. Now, <clears throat> it would be great if I could keep that picture in there, but here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place this right here on top, and then I'll be able to take a snapshot of that, and I'm going to leave it right up here in the corner so that you can see it. How's that? Okay, so it should be up there right now. And that way uh, you can see what I'm doing. All right, well, I think what I'm going to start off doing right now is that there are dark areas here and here and here and here and a little, not as dark, but still here and here. And these are the areas that are going to define the dimensions of the nose. And then from there, I can start shading and going lighter up into the uh, base of the nose here and so forth and so that's what I'm going to be focusing on in a lot of my videos people in the comments you know I there's someone that's always going to ask hey what pencil did you use well I've always shown every pencil I've used so it, if you don't know what pencil I use please watch the video again but here I'm just going to go ahead and start with the 6B woodless pencil and because I just want to get some uh, nice uh, shading going on here just some just some nice dark graphite that I can use to get started here and um, not always going to know what to say because it's hard to keep talking and drawing at the same time so uh, I'm, I apologize in advance if I go through periods of silence um, if anything just kind of you know watch what I'm doing and I'll try to interject when I can. But all I'm doing right now is just getting in the what I see is the dark areas of his nose. Obviously I'm working on the nostril right now and I might want to use a, a much darker pencil for that. So I'm going to go back to the 9XXB so when you see this green pencil show up, it's the only one I have that looks like this, uh, you'll know that it is the 9XXB. And hopefully it shows up right there. You can see it says 9XXB. Okay. This is graphite and carbon mixed. So <clears throat> not easy to erase, but it is certainly a dark pencil.
remember to keep this pencil sharp. It's a lot easier to do details when it's sharp. And not too many pencil sharpeners will sharpen this. So you have to get one that will accompany that. And uh, I have this, this general all art pencil. General's all art. It's just this little red thing, but it allows me to sharpen this pencil. And I also have this really big jumbo thing here. I did a video on it. I don't remember the name of it, but that'll, that'll do definitely the biggest pencils I can possibly stick in there. So now that I've got the darkest parts in, I don't want to do the whole thing in this. It's very hard to erase it too. So I'm going to go back to that 6B right here, the 6B, and that's when I'm going to start getting the other dark shades in. And looking at the reference, I'm getting an idea where, where this all goes. As long as you put it on lightly, you can always take it off. So don't be afraid to, to lay down that, that dark 6B pencil because you can take it off. Okay? And that's the beauty of drawing with pencils and erasers. It's not like oil paint oil paint you put it on you make a mistake you can't scrape it you gotta you can't linseed oil it off then you just paint over it when it gets a little bit dry and tacky I used to paint with oils um, don't anymore kind of kind of change the things I like to do which is not unusual now I'm going to just use a, you know, one of these um, blending tools, the wrap, tightly wrapped paper. You see, I have one marked 6B because that way it just reminds me I'm always using it to blend 6B. But you know, you don't have to do that. I just, I just like to do it. And I'm going to use some of this black. Uh, I sh well, it's not really black, but this dark graphite that I just laid down. And I'm going to use it. To, to draw some of the other shaded areas here but it'll come out slightly lighter make sure that I kind of kind of lift my fingers up a little bit in other words I kind of take the pressure off a little bit as I'm going up the nose here from the dark area I want it to start getting lighter as we go up <clears throat> so you should start seeing that my blending lightens up a little bit and so you can see it's darker here than it is here 
because I'm as I'm moving up and I'm blending up I'm lightening the shade as I go up because as it gets closer to the top here it's going to be much lighter because his, his nose is rounded he's not flat so you have to give that illusion since you're using a 2d um, drawing material which is the paper and the table that it's on is flat that you, you know you have to give the illusion that it's going from a bottom area here the base of the nose and it's going upwards towards the top which is the light area so I'm going to, I'm going to ease off as I get higher to the top here and then put more pressure when it gets down back down to the base again there should be no white in here but it should lighten up as you you move up you give this illusion that there's like this you know hill here and then I'm going to round this off and bring it up notice I'm doing all this with a blender I'm not even using a pencil smooth out the dark area here make sure the transitions look natural and not so strong and abrupt This all area here is really, really dark, but I'm going to use the blending tool in here first, and then I will come back in with a darker pencil, the 6B again. But I just want to get the shadow in here just so I have the area mapped out. So I know where I'm going with this. Also know that right here under the nostrils, they're shading here, and I should have used the black, the 9XXB there or the 6B, but I will do that in a moment. First off, first, I want to get this in here like so. Okay, so it's coming together now. Down here is definitely darker. Notice I'm still using the blender through this whole thing because I still have plenty of material in this blender. So I'm going to get that in there. And it's dark here. But then it lightens up as you go up to the point. So I'll start lightening up as I go up to the point. Get the dark back in there again. I'm losing it. I can put some more material down there if my blender gets a little bit dried up, which it is. So here I'm going to take my 6B again, give me some more nice dark material in here, I'm losing it. It all needs to be darkened here, and just right here. This has all got to be dark, this is all dark. Every bit of this is dark here. Okay. Now the 6B and the 9XXB starting to <clears throat> look the same to me. And I want the area here in the nostrils to be exceptionally dark. So I'm using my 9XXB again just to get that back under control. that and we've got some 
here. And I mentioned I wanted a little bit here. Now, this one here, I think I'm going to go with the 6B because it's not as dark as the nostril. So I'm just going to save this. Nine XXB for this nostril here. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm back to the 6B, and like I said, I was going to go ahead and make sure I get this part here. Just get some material down so I can get that blender to, to pick it up and move it. Okay, so see how my blender and and then use it to darken up. I'm kind of going circular again, like I like to do with my pencil. Gives me good control. photo that should be showing right now the upper right of the screen you should be able to see what it is that I'm trying to do here this is the highlight area here you can see that this is a very light area here <clears throat> but here you have you need a little more material here it's a little more shading there and I just drew a line in there that I don't want so on it to use my kneaded eraser get some unwanted material off of there there we go but I'm going to need some more here switch to my 4B that's just a little too dark right now for me so here's the 4B okay so that I can go ahead and be a little more aggressive with my my laying it down I don't have to be so light on my pressure even though I'm always light on pressure I do want to be able to move without worrying about it being too too dark Okay, down here might be not dark enough with the pencil I just had, but let me get this in here. Okay. All right. And again, I'm going to blend. I don't want any sharp lines. There's no white under his nose, so I'll go ahead and blend that in. And I'll get the details later. But you gotta you gotta definitely get the dark under the nose there. Otherwise the contrast would just not look right. 
There we go. And you definitely need some good dark material down here. Then my 4B will not get as dark as that 9XXB, so it's okay for me to to get in here and be a little bit more aggressive with my graphite and add some more shading. This is all shading going on underneath his nose. If you'll look at the reference, you'll see this is all dark area here. So I, I have a long ways to go to get it as dark as it needs to be. You can see this area here is really going to need to get very, very dark. So I'm going to be working on that quite a bit. Yeah, the 4B is not going to be dark enough for under here, but that's not why I pulled it up in the first place. Let me get this shaded here before I start losing control. It's always a good idea to get the other, get the surrounding skin area to the nose too, so you at least have some gauge as to how dark you can go and so forth. So I'm going to get that in there. Let's see if this four is going to help me here. Again, we get that blended. And then we work our way up the nose to diffuse it a little bit, make it look like it's climbing up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shade that in. And then I'm going to take my little eraser. Just kind of start working on adding and subtracting till I get it just to where I'm happy. shade up the nose again I'm losing my my dark area right here so I have to keep going back making sure I put some more material back down now remember this is not a race and without a doubt videotaping kind of kind of gets me into a hurried state that I don't really don't really like but I'm doing this for you guys so I hope you appreciate it. I know you do. I've read your comments and I'm really happy that you're, you're getting something from this. I've learned a lot from YouTube videos. I don't want any 
hard lines, so blend out, and up. Constantly when I pull my uh, blender away, I'm going back to looking at my reference photo make sure that I can see where everything is supposed to be. Because I'm right-handed, my hand is on top of the reference photo, i got to constantly lift it up. I'm going to stitch here. That way. Use this here as my hand goes. There we go, that's even better. See that. Okay, I'm going to go back to the 6B again. The 6B. Because I need those really darker areas here and I'm losing them. So. as soon as I start to blend it's going to feather down a little bit in intensity I might have to do it again hopefully not too soon
come from the darkest area and I work my way up the nostril, I have to lighten the pressure on my pencil or I need to go to a lighter pencil because I'm going into a lighter area of the skin here. And again, I could just use the blender to side of the nose doesn't have a whole lot of dark tones on because the light is really hitting it really good here so <clears throat> I'm gonna have to make some very subtle highlights to impress upon anyone watching this and looking at this drawing that there is in fact a darkening of the nose as we come down here. So I'm going to kind of get that shaded in right now, what I think is the darkest area of the skin, and then I'm going to have to kind of make adjustments as I go. is going to have to be lighter than this side and that's going to be tricky because I don't want this side to be too light I may have to darken this side and if I darken this I might have to darken this side and so forth and so on until I make the proper adjustments and you'll notice I'll, I'll stop in one area and move to another I'm going to go where my eyes lead me and try to gauge where everything should be. I'm going to stand back for a while. Now, what I'll do here, just to see how it works out, is I'm going to take my little Q-tip, blend that out a little bit there, but I'm going to, I want to get rid of those highlights above the tip of the nose here and so forth and see if I can get everything blended in so there is no real white area here though it is lighter Let's see if I can do this and then I'll keep going Let's see if it goes around like this Clearly I'm going to need more material, so I'm going to lay it down. Still using the 4B.
brighten that up a little bit. I may end up going in and darken it a little bit, but right now this is the lightest area of his nose, and I don't want it to get too far ahead on that. I've got some up here. And some smooth transitions. Everything's about getting a smooth transition. Give it that 3D look. Now it doesn't stand out so much, but it will be a subtle difference in shade. And that's what I need to get here is a subtle difference of shade. Okay, that looks pretty good. If I say so myself, and I did. And then we'll just go in here, neighboring area, which I know is going to be lighter. And let's see. I'm going to go grab me a 2B. I'm going to go a little lighter on this pencil so I could just start gradually adding some details without swallowing up areas of this. Now see this 2B isn't going to make this area too dark, which is perfect, because and it's going to allow me to make the subtle changes that I need here. And this nose is going to take me some time to finish. But again, I am in no hurry. I'm I'm looking for some really good, you know, photorealism here. I I need to be able to do a little at a time and walk away. I can't emphasize that enough for those of you just starting out. When I first started doing this, I was getting a little impatient. And all that was doing was just holding me back from experiencing what I wanted to with my art. So... Do not be impatient. Otherwise, like I say, you know, if you're going to be impatient, find something else to do. This is the wrong thing to be drawing if you're going to be impatient. See, so yeah, I get all the nice details in that are blended out, and, <clears throat> and I need to touch up an area here where I made a line which is too dark. Uh, you gotta love these erasers, you know, they just take out what you need and leave the rest. There we go. And then I'm gonna get that filled in again. Nice. Get the surrounding areas here done because I don't want just a line there that looks kind of funky. You can have a line there. Alright. starting to come out pretty good. The more you work with it, the better it's going to get too. So just keep working it. Work it, work it, work it. Work it, girls. Here we go. All right. Get those. 
some down here. Some more down here. You use your pencil, you can use it as a burnishing tool, you know, just like your blender, but you're using an actual pencil. Just burnish it in. area of the nose uh, taken care of it allows the nose part to stand out Now, as you can see, the bottom of the nose is still not as dark as the reference, and every time I blend it, it's getting lighter again. I'm going with my 9XXB, and I'm going to start getting a little more aggressive here to get that darkness in there. And the 9XXB will not blend out as easily as everything else does. So they'll keep it'll keep it nice and dark underneath there which is the way I want it you can see where the shade the shadow comes down under the nose and it comes across here okay so I'm making sure I get that in there Make sure I replicate the shape of that shadow as close as possible because your picture will definitely not look as, as real as the photograph if you don't mimic the patterns that you see. I 
got some going up here. I need to get some going here. And since I have graphite already down there, the 9x6b is not going to lay as easy because of the carbon, but it will lay. some ways to go anyway I need to keep working on this <clears throat> and I need to work on it without talking on the camera so much so I'm going to sign off on this video here and instead of completing the whole thing in front of you so I can at least at least get something done on this because this camera is right in my face and it is really a difficult to do this and also to do it when you have everybody watching um, hopefully you, you understand that uh, some of us need to just kind of chill without the pressure okay but I wanted to get it started for you so you can see what I'm doing. And the key is just to make sure that you make it a nice high contrast. You're getting your shadows in. You got to get your shadows in there. You can't be afraid to go dark. You got to go dark so that your midtones and your lights really pop. If I have too much trouble with getting the dark that I need, I can always go to charcoal. So don't forget, you have tools, and I definitely will use my tools to achieve my objective. <laughs>
don't know what I would do without blenders. I tell you, it really just helps you to round things off and get the sense of shape and really love it. Really love it. Well, I certainly hope you learned something from this video. Um, I'm still going to be doing more uh, with his nose. But as you can see, it's starting to develop that 3D look like it's coming off the page. And that's what you have to do. So this, before I sign off, let me just say a few things here. Just as a reminder, make sure you get your dark shell. Oh, I just touched it. Oops. Make sure you get your dark areas in. And as you blend out, they'll lighten, bring them back again by adding more of, of whatever you're using to make it dark. I use the 9XXB and the 6B. Get your dark areas in so you can define the shape of the nose. And then use the blender and kind of blend to the lighter areas. You'll diffuse a lot of the harshness of the dark shadows. But at the same time, you'll start to develop that dark to light. You're going to go from dark mid-tone to light. And that's going to kind of bring the shape out off the page towards you okay so you can see in the uh, reference photo that's right here you can you can check out the difference you may notice some things that I don't notice at this point uh, you know I'm going I'm not done with it yet there's more that I'm going to do but I'm I don't normally just finish something and then go to something else I go do a little then I'm going to do some here and then I'm going to do something here and then let the whole thing develop. But I wanted to do the video on the nose, you know, to some point, And that's what I just did now. So you can see that it's starting to take shape. It's not done yet. It's starting to take shape. And uh, as I go along, I'm, I'm going to, you know, of course, finish uh, this drawing. But right now, I'm going to walk away from it and go get some lunch or something. And I will tackle it. At another time and then uh, keep working on the rest of this drawing but I wanted to get something done here uh, for you guys uh, on the subject of the nose so I think I've got enough here for you to to at least get an idea of what to do and I will see you all in the next video if you like this uh, demonstration Please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. The, there's more to the series as I continue to uh, finish uh, this drawing of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. All right, well, thank you very much, and I do appreciate you guys. Bye.